Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It helps. It really does. Hello, full lovers. It's good you're here. Don Wong, more famously known as Wang Tao or Southern Fist, was born in 1950 in Taiwan. He is a film and television actor and producer known for his work in The Secret Rivals and Hot the Cool and the Vicious, 1976, and Along Comes the Tiger, 1977, which was distributed through his production company. At the age of 15, Wang's father took him to Italy. This is where he began his training in Taekwondo. As time went on, he would earn his black belt and began to take part in martial art tournaments with great success. One day, Wang was given a choice by his father of either going to Germany or America to further his education. He liked the idea of living in America, so he chose to go there. In America, he continued his education going to high school for three years, but he did not complete his studies. He maintained his Taekwondo training and soon started competing at tournaments. It was at one of these contests where he finished in first place that he was noticed by movie scouts for the Golden Harvest Studio. He was soon approached by Golden Harvest top director Lowe, who offered him a three-year movie deal. At first, his parents were not excited by the idea, as they wanted him to complete his schooling. He would, however, convince them with the assurance that if by the end of the three years he was not successful in the movie industry, he would return to school and complete his studies. They would agree to his deal. Upon signing the contract with Golden Harvest, Wang was given a brief role in the movie Chinatown Capers in 1974. Shortly after, he would be given a lead role opposite Chuck Norris in the movie Slaughter in San Francisco, aka Yellow Face Tiger. The movie would do badly at the box office. Wang would later state in an interview, what Lo Wei was attempting to do at the time was to emulate the success that he had a few years prior with the lead Bruce Lee. In essence, he tried to make Wang into the next Bruce Lee. The failure of the movie was placed squarely on Wang's shoulder, and he was let out of his contract. After a year of getting no offers to film any movies, Wang was approached by director NGCN, who apparently had seen something in his performance that impressed him enough for him to give Wang a leading role in a little movie called The Secret Rivals. Wang would then go to Korea to film the movie that was also co-starring two other unknown actors, John Liu, whose only other acting experience was a non-speaking role in one other movie, and Huang Zhang Li, who had more experience, but mainly in low-budget Korean productions. When the movie was first released in 1976, not only did it change the landscape of martial arts cinema, it also made instant stars out of all its main players, both in front and behind the camera. With the huge success of the Secret Rivals movie, NGCN approached his main cast with a proposal for a sequel. Everyone would agree to return with the exception of Wang. In later years, he would attribute his refusal to return to the movie as a lack of communication between him and NGCN. Instead, he would star in the classic movie The Hot, The Cool and The Vicious with director Lee So Nam and co-starring Tan Tao Liang. In later years, he cited his decision to not star in Secret Rivals Part 2 as the main reason his career stalled in the Hong Kong film industry. Wang would go on to star in many more independently made Kung Fu classics, mainly for Taiwanese producers, films such as Ten Brothers of Shaolin and Eagle's Claw, 1977, Challenge of Death and Fatal Needles, Fatal Fist, 1978, and Death Duel of Kung Fu, 1979, just to be with you. After his experience with Golden Harvest at the beginning of his career, Wang seemed to stay clear of major film companies. However, in 1981, he would star alongside Tai Long, Chen Quan Tai, and Derek Yi in a Shaw Brothers production, a movie called Battle for the Republic of China. In the mid-80s, the Kung Fu movies era was coming to an end, and although Wang would continue to work on movies, he would begin to transition into television work. The last Kung Fu movie role he would be seen in is Donnie Yen's debut film, Drunk in Tai Chi in 1984. Beginning in 1999 up to present time, Wang would mainly be seen in television series, mainly for Thai television. He has maintained his privacy throughout the years, so not much is known about his life outside the movies. But through his many classic films, we know all that we need to know to determine that his legacy in the annals of Kung Fu cinema is safe and secure. To Don Wang Tao we say, thanks for the memories. 
If you have enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and feel free to leave a comment. Thank you and may the food be with you.